Hello there, video viewers and also podcast listeners. Welcome to this new episode and indeed this new video, which is available on YouTube. I'm joined this time by Joel McPherson. Uh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was actually thinking if I should correct you on the on the document before <laughs> that it, that it's Josh, because you had Did my I... name correct in the document, but the title was wrong. So Damn. I wasn't sure if, if I should just uh, <laughs> I should say something or not. <laughs> so I called you Joel McPherson. I don't know where that comes from, but your name is Josh, of course. Josh. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um josh mcpherson i why didn't why on earth am i did i call you joel i don't know but anyway big jo i mean i i get it a lot john james uh there, there's another guy uh who does toeful as well and his name's joseph so often i get called joseph so that that might be a part of it too do do students of english get your name wrong as well yeah, I uh, sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they do with me. They do, I get all sorts of things. I get luck, look, uh, you know, like uh, rook, right. uh, duke, all sorts of things. Rook, yeah, rook, well, they, yes, they, ruku they, in Jap in Japan. Ruku, yeah. So I'm I'm in Japan, and LNR is kind of an infamous problem here. So I imagine, yeah, ruku, you would get a lot. Mm -hmm. I I I live in Japan, and uh, my uh, my wife is Japanese. My mother in law calls me Joshu, and most people call me Joshu because they're used to things ending with vowels, uh, you know, so that, that sounds the so same thing with Luke, Duku. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so that, that and then uh, in Korea, I would get called Joshi, like, uh, uh, so that was another one. So a lot of words ending with vowels that are almost my name. Uh, yeah. But I find them endearing, actually. I, I, to me, I actually don't mind them that much. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind. They, yeah. I, I think it's cute. Um, but uh, the, the only thing that bothers me is when just, I guess, when people write emails to me and for some reason mm. I'm either called Mr. Luck or Mr. Luke or just Luck. Luck is the most common one. Yeah. Maybe it's that's spell a good one. check. Yes, I'm, I'm yeah, right. That's I'm a good happy one. with yeah. that. Yeah. Lucky yeah, Luke. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. It might be spell check. It might just be people's computers and and so-called smartphones like automatically correcting my name. Even me when I'm probably writing, yeah. when I'm writing messages sometimes um, and I sign my you know write my name at the end, it will mm. auto correct my name to like. Right. So I'm like, what are you? You know, I, you're my yeah, phone. Yeah. What are you doing? So right, I don't right. understand that. Um, I mean, Luke is a pretty common name. I'm surprised it's not in there. You know that that it's not. Uh, you know, I would understand if it's a little bit more. You know, kind of a, a different type of name. Uh, but mm. Luke is pretty common. Maybe what I'm doing is because I'm typing it quite quickly, and I mm. maybe get something wrong. It instead of correcting my garbled version of Luke into Luke, it corrects <laughs> right, it to right, like. Right. You know. Yeah. Anyway. Be. Yeah, so yeah, I should yeah. do a little introduction here, Josh. Um, sure, please, please, yeah. Let me do that. So video viewers, sure. hello. So I'm joined today by uh, Josh McPherson, not Joel. That's someone else. Sure. But so I'm joined today by <laughs> Josh McPherson. Maybe I'll get Joel on the podcast at some yeah, point. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm definitely Googling Joel McPherson after this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so J Josh McPherson is from mm -hmm. uh, tstprep.com and also mm -hmm. TST Prep on YouTube. And right. Josh is an English teacher who specializes in helping learners of English prepare for English tests, particularly right. the TOEFL test and also the fairly new Duolingo English test, which um, right. I don't really know much about. And I thought I would interview Josh uh, today to find out more about these tests and to get mm. some tips from him about how to get the best result that you can. And also we, we, we might do a few test questions during the interview so we can see how good my English is, as if that's in <laughs> doubt. I'm sure. I'm sure you'll do wonderful. Yeah, but I, I don't know. They, it's it's a North American test, so the the British accent might we might have to work on. Mm, mm, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. So I've got to get all my spelling right. I've got to spell right, all the right. words wrong. I mean, yeah. you know. No, that actually that actually doesn't matter. No? Uh, the the accent shouldn't matter. No. No. Yeah. I'm just yeah. It's like it's like with Cambridge exams. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter that much. People do right. sometimes worry quite a bit about British and American English. Sure. There's an argument to say that you should probably stick to one. But actually, mm. for the most part, it doesn't matter that much, does it? And the tests don't really care either. We don't 
it doesn't make a no, huge difference. No, I mean, they, they can't really. Like, I mean, it's it's based on intelligibility is, is the big word. You know, is, is it understandable? Um, and if it's understandable, then then that's the most important thing. And I and most people agree that um, getting exposure to a lot of different types of accents is one of the best ways to, you know, use English and communicate with it because you're going to be dealing with a, in communicating with a lot of different people, speaking a lot of different dialects, a lot of different ways. So you might as well not limit yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Josh, first of all, I suppose, um, before we get into the tests and stuff, I should just, you know, generally ask you if you kind of get to know you questions, because we haven't met before. Sure. Um, so yeah, you're based in Japan. Where, where are you from mm -hmm. exactly? So I'm from the States. I'm from uh, New York originally. I'm from uh, pretty close to the Queens Long Island border. Um, and so I grew up uh, around the New York City area. And then I uh, went to school in New York, uh, went to Korea to teach English, uh, then came to Japan. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of a long story. But, <laughs> so, but basically, you know, I, I'm an English teacher in Japan at this point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How long have you been teaching English now? Uh, so I've been doing it for about 15 years. So I went to school to uh, originally to be a high school history teacher. Um, and then later I went for my master's in uh, applied language, not applied linguistics, sorry, uh, uh, English uh, language and instruction. Mm -hmm. And then so I started teaching in the private sector. Uh, I kind of floated towards um, uh, working with international students in New York. I worked at a, a college in New York City called ASA College and I was um, the kind of uh, academic coordinator it was called there uh, so we had students from all over most of them had student visas and uh, they had to improve their English and one part of that is to take the TOEFL and so that's kind of how I fell into it um, to keep your student visa you have to be in class physically for 20 hours a week um, and so, so the, there's this 20 hour a week TOEFL class. <laughs> so, 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 for, so four hours a day, five days a week TOEFL. Uh, and I had to fill that time. And that, that's how I kind of uh, basically learned uh, about the test and learned how to teach it. Because it's pretty, you know, like IELTS, it's a pretty long, complicated test. It's pretty dense. It's, uh, you know, it's hard to kind of wrap your head around everything. Um, so mm. yeah, that's how, that's how I fell into it. And then, and, and then after that, about three or four years ago, we moved to Japan. Yeah. Um, just yes. uh, because uh, New York City is a pretty expensive place. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, Japan <laughs> so, is not exactly cheap. Right. Either. Yeah. Japan's not that cheap either. But, uh, you know, we have, I have a couple of kids. We have uh, her family's here. And so and we're also not in Tokyo. We're, we're, I'm, I live in Kyoto, which is like the, the smaller city. And yeah. we're in the suburbs. So you, comparatively speaking, the, the cost of living is, is much, much cheaper. Yeah. I used to live in the sort of I used to live in Kanagawa prefecture. Um, OK. About 30 minutes from Yokohama. Sure. About yeah, yeah, yeah. Nearly an hour from Tokyo, and yeah, that was a super expensive um, place to live, and the money just sure. just disappeared from my wallet every month. In fact, I had yeah. to live. I, I lived for the first like three months of living there when I was on a kind of probationary contract where I didn't get okay. paid a lot. I had to live basically on Yoshinoya for about two months. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah yeah yeah. the, the beef bowl uh restaurant yeah. yeah it's not the best diet i wouldn't recommend eating that but i had to like very carefully plan my spending and i've discovered right. that eating what is it gudon right gudon gudon yeah gudon, yeah, gudon, yeah. that gudon. that would save me a lot of money but it wasn't a good idea i don't think it was a very healthy move yeah i mean you know you're probably you know younger younger man you can get away with it you know uh and, i was at the uh, time <laughs> yeah. i think now that the gudon diet wouldn't work out so well but no. uh yeah i mean you can eat pretty cheaply here well you know like, like they they have the the kind of famous bento boxes and the kombinis here and uh like you know you can have like a uh, fresh fish and vegetables and rice and all that stuff and a pretty balanced diet compared to like a convenience store in America where like, like a, like a, a day old hot dog under a heat lamp. Like it's, it's not, uh, it's not a great diet, I would say yeah. convenience store, but you can get away with a lot more here, I think on a, on a, on a budget. 
But yeah, I mean, if you live in Kanagawa and, and you're, uh, you know, making a teacher's salary, the money's going to go pretty fast. It did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love those <laughs> convenience stores in Japan. They are fantastic. There now, are, yeah. Yeah. we should talk about tests. Now, so sure. um, as, a, as a Brit, I am much more familiar with the Cambridge exams, you know, IELTS, sure. as we mentioned, FCE, CAE, and, and the other ones. Um, and okay. TOEFL is something I did teach some TOEFL and some TOEIC when I was living in Japan many years ago. Mm -hmm. So let, what we're going to do, right, we, we're going to talk about two different tests, which are really big. Um, there's the TOEFL test and the Duolingo English test. Right. Um, and so let's start with TOEFL, right? So could you give us okay. an overview? Can you give me a reminder of what is involved in TOEFL? It's probably sure. quite a long one. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a quite a long one, but uh, reading, listening, speaking, writing in that order. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and then they actually recently. So th there's a couple things to say about the TOEFL that are recent updates. Uh, one is that on August 1st, 2019, they made the TOEFL shorter. So it used to be a four hour test and now it's like a three to three and a half hour test. Um, so that was, um, a way to kind of make the test a little less intense, I guess, for, mm -hmm. for people. Mm -hmm. Um, so they, they have, they still have three reading passage passages in the reading section and they are academic texts and they're about 700 words long. Uh, they're pretty dense. You would, you would, and the test is designed to see if you're prepared to go to university in America. So the, all the questions are kind of based around an academic setting. So the reading passages are, are like academic texts that you would see in a textbook. Uh, there's a bunch of different types of topics that you can get, uh, mm -hmm. but something you might see in your freshman year of school Yeah. Uh, with about 10 different question types and 10 different questions per passage. Uh, and so you have to remember all these kind of weird question types. Uh, there's some that are like, you know, vocabulary question and, and detail question, well, it's called factual information, which is a very, you know, simple question, but mm -hmm. give it a, a long name. Yeah. Uh, but then you, you might have something like, uh, um, like, uh, what's an example like a, a negative factual information question or a rhetorical purpose question and then when you start reading that kind of stuff and you're an English language learner it becomes pretty daunting um, and, mm. and uh, pretty intense uh, so, so that's the reading and then the listening is a mix of conversations and lectures um, there's usually uh, there's usually two conversations and four lectures around there uh, after, after the update, they changed it. So I have to double check, but, um, the conversations are followed by five questions, lectures followed by six. You don't get to see the questions until after the listening. Mm. So, you know, so part of the strategy is that you have to take good notes. Uh, you can take notes by hand. Um, they give you a pencil and a piece of paper, uh, and it's the same for the at-home test. So they, since COVID they do an at-home test as well. Uh, and then... Yeah, so that so that has about thirty questions in that section, and that's followed by the speaking. Uh, the speaking has four questions, four, five. Sections. It used to be I used to be six, so I'm just trying to think of the the update. I'm pretty sure it's four. Um, okay. And they cut two of the questions, and they have an independent question, which is very simple. It just asks you like, uh, you know, all high school students should wear school uniforms. Do you agree or disagree? And then you know, you give your opinion. Uh, and you have to speak for 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. Now that sounds pretty simple, but you know, when you're, you know, told it's very unnatural for somebody to give you a question and then tell you, okay, speak. Yeah. And then you have to speak for a specific amount of time. So it's yeah. like kind of a, a weird experience. Um, I work with students who, uh, you know, they speak English every day. They, they have a job in, in America or, you know, wherever, and they can't get a, a good speaking score because it's just a very, strange experience and they can't replicate that mm. natural kind of smoothness that they usually have. Uh, so that's the, the, then the, there's integrated speaking questions, which is a reading passage, short reading, short listening, uh, one academic and uh, I'm sorry, two, two, yeah, two academic and one uh, just kind of like a natural conversation. Uh, that's that sorry, the in integrated speaking questions. That's where you, yeah, you read something or listen to something and then you respond to it orally. Is that it? Right. 
exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, there's there's two. So there's four questions. So the first is independent. The second is integrated, and that integrated is a an announcement. The reading is an announcement about something that changed on campus, and okay. the listening is two people talking about it, um, and like. Do you like this? No, I, I think it's a bad idea. And then they talk about it. Uh, and then the the next two questions are academic questions. One is a uh, short reading. This is question three. Is a short reading about some academic topic, and then somebody a lecturer speaks about it. And then question four is just listening, where you just listen to a lecture and then you speak about it. And you have to speak about those integrated questions for sixty seconds. Okay, so you like you you read the thing or listen to the audio, and then you mm -hmm. you kind of respond to it yourself. You talk about right. it for about sixty seconds. I, I see. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. So they seemed quite unnatural situations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so I I always get a mix uh, opinion from people who know about the IELTS. You know, mm. like like that that they you know they they sit down with a person and the person asks them questions and and maybe you could tell me a bit more about the the IELTS kind of structure. Of yeah. the interview but i know that it's an interview with with somebody sitting there and and you know asking you questions um that's right some people prefer that and i think most people do i'm gonna say maybe somebody can let me know what what, what they prefer to speak to a computer kind of unnaturally or to sit down and speak with an interviewer oh well, okay uh, so so it's you yeah. you speak into a microphone and it's recorded right. and and then people sort of assess it later Unlike right. with IELTS, where you've got someone who's talking to you, and then there's another sort of mysterious person sitting in the corner. Who's oh, there's a, of... there's a mysterious person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't know about the person. mysterious person. Well, they're not that uh, mysterious because, to be honest, yeah. normally what happens is when you come into the the, the room for your speaking test, yeah. you'll mm -hmm. sit down, and the person says, "Hello, my name's Luke, and this is my colleague Dave." I don't know if they still do that. Maybe they do. This is my colleague, Dave. And then, you know, it's like, can I have your marking sheets, please? And then you have to like, right. oh, give over, give your papers over. And then, right, right, then right. they start. And, and it's like, you know, sort of conversational questions at the beginning. And then you get to okay. get like one task where you have to talk for on your own for a, for a bit, for a, for a minute or two. Okay. And then there's a, a more in-depth discussion where you talk, you know, give your opinions and talk on a, in a more abstract way. So reading, listening, speaking, we talked mm -hmm. about. And then writing. Mm -hmm. Oh, so yeah. So writing is two questions, uh, two essays, uh, independent and integrated. Same kind of structure as uh, TOEFL speaking is the the first question, but the, they switch the order. The first question is integrated, where you have to uh, read an academic text. It's about 300 words. And then you have to listen to a uh, lecture about the, ta about the text. Usually... Um, the text gives a couple of opinions about some type of controversial issue, like uh, uh, like something academic, you know, like that the um, uh, the reasons why dinosaurs went extinct, and it's probably these three reasons. And then mm -hmm. the listening will say, well, these are the problems of these three reasons. Uh, and then you have to report on what the reading and listening said and their points of disagreement. Uh, and you're great. You want to make sure when you do the integrated writing that you don't include any information like outside information, uh, that it's everything was from the text. Everything was from the reading. Everything was from the listening. You don't give your opinion. You don't do anything like that. Okay. Um, and then the independent writing is like TOEFL speaking question one. It's just a simple question and you give your opinion. Uh, again, it could be there's some differences in the questions, but there's nothing really that different. Um, most of the time, it's just your, your opinion. And, and one big piece of advice I give to students for these questions is to pick one side. You know, like, uh, so do you agree or disagree S students should wear school uniforms? Uh, you know, maybe, you know, you have a, an opinion that's nuanced. You know, sometimes, yeah, they should, but maybe sometimes they shouldn't. I guess it depends on the school and the situation. But don't have a nuanced opinion on the top. <laughs> just, just, just pick one side and and just kind of stick with it. And yeah. the reason for that is just because it's easier to um, organize your thoughts and also to deliver a more structured uh, kind of uh, response. Um, yeah. Sometimes you can, people get a little lost in the weeds if they're trying to look at all the angles. It's similar to IELTS where you have to do uh, a, an essay, a for and against essay. And um, yeah, one thing that I often tell students is that also they don't have to actually give their own real opinion. 
because this is often right, the, right, right, right. the thing that people struggle with is like what do i really think about this um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. it really doesn't matter just come up with some stock um sort of response or just pick some opinion it doesn't have right. to be yours uh, it just right. pick whatever's easiest to right. to write an essay about essentially yeah. yeah, I made um. I actually because it's it, you know that problem came up a lot, and then also the problem of thinking of reasons for your opinion, you know, like so, like people, like some, you know, actually saying your opinion on a topic you don't know anything about is a little weird in a lot of different cultures. Mm. Uh, Americans tend to have opinions about everything, so you know, it it kind of it for us it's kind of <laughs> it's very comfortable and fine, but for a lot of people, especially being in Japan, like. You know, there's some questions that ask you, like, should governments invest in space travel? You know, like, like uh, you know, and a lot of people are kind of like, well, I, why would I have an opinion about that? That's not my job. That's not my expertise. I don't there's no reason for me to have an opinion about that. Yeah, <laughs> And also so, some some cultures, I think also the, the people will be kind of thinking, well, what should my opinion be? What am I expected to say sure. here? Um, yeah. Yeah. So coming up with opinions can be quite difficult. I guess yeah. um, a good thing to practice is just to take all these topics if you can find you know the sample questions and, and topics mm. and things and just practice coming up with arguments on both sides sure. um, you know just just constantly coming up with arguments for and against whatever it is you could come up with yeah. anything it could be even stupid things like you know right, should right, right, right. i don't know what like uh should cats and dogs coexist <laughs> You know, should, should, I mean, they do, right? They, they, they do now. They do, right? but should they? This is the question. <laughs> should, should, <they>? <laughs> <laughs> should we wipe out one population? Is it, should is we, it, yeah, is cats or dogs? Small which, for both? Which, which ones should should we allow to survive, or should it be both? You know, or whatever it is, just any stupid thing. But just practice coming up with arguments on both sides. Right, right. Um, I, I actually, I'm, I'm trying to remember this. Uh, uh, I'm just trying to bring up this this document that I, I had made about um, thinking of reasons for your opinion uh, and like what are some categories for thinking of reasons for your opinion. So, uh, yeah, I just pull it. So there, there's one thing is that there's four categories I would give students is to think about money, relationships, time and education. Like so when you have your opinion on the question, how does it affect your money? How would it affect your relationships? How would it affect your time? Um, and then. Uh, think about it in those terms to help you generate reasons, you know, mm. so like, uh, so, okay, let's say, uh, should cats and dogs coexist? Well, how would that affect my relationship with my wife who has a cat and I have a dog? Um, you know, let's say, for example, mm -hmm. um, or how it affect my time, you know, exterminating all the cats would be difficult. Um, <laughs> and, <you> know, <laughs> so, <laughs> be a huge uh, waste of time, wouldn't it? Like, you know, we've got a big, important business meeting. Sorry, I'm taking care of these cats, putting yeah. cats in bags. <laughs> Uh, right, listen, right. listeners, yeah. viewers. Obviously, we um, <laughs> we think it's important to state that uh, you know cats and dogs should coexist, and both they of should, them. Yeah. No, you know they shouldn't be exterminated unless it's absolutely necessary. Right, right. There you go. Good. That's that's a good conclusion. That's a good conclusion to a total speaking question. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. um, okay, okay. So we we just had an overview. Should we? I mean, it's you know it's, it's a fairly large test. I mean, you you spend lots of time giving people uh, advice and and helping people prepare for the test. Uh, mm -hmm. We can't cover everything. Should we focus on one particular part of the test? Do you think? Sure. Yeah, I thought, um, you know, maybe we can uh, go over a question and ha and have you actually give a sample response. And then using your sample response, I'll uh, give some feedback. I'm sure it'll be wonderful and I won't have anything to say, but. Uh, well, me... <laughs> th this would be the speaking part then. Is that right? This would be the speaking. Yeah. So, uh, OK. Um, by the way, you know, I have this uh, document. I'll, I'll send it to you after this, uh, Luke, that you can put in the in the description. It's a link to a document for thinking of reasons for your opinion. Um, if And uh, can I share my screen? Is that OK? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I, yeah. I think that you've been given permission to do it on Zoom. Um, OK, let's let's give it a shot. Yeah, How's yeah, that? yeah, yeah. We can see it. That's great. OK, um, so that's that. And yeah, I'll, I'll send this to you afterwards and then people can just download it. Okay. Um, so I pulled up this, uh, this is from our site, and then we have a couple different things. Uh, we have these practice tests here. And then I pulled up a speaking question. So there's four questions in the speaking section. Mm -hmm. And this is, um, now usually on the test, 
Uh, actually, you know what? Let me give this the whole experience and get get a timer here. Um, so because that that just adds a nice element of pressure. Oh, I feel um, stressed now. Yeah, the, and oh. it is a stressful thing to get used to, and that that's something that we recommend is that trying to replicate the test conditions as much as possible uh, is ideal because you want to be you want to try to make yourself uncomfortable outside of the test so you can be more comfortable on test day like no matter you know practice or difficult questions practice in you know when there's not covid noisy cafes and things like that yeah uh, and then when you actually do take the test it it won't be as stressful hopefully yeah um and you've prepared for the worst okay. uh so I'm not going to play the, the if I play this, this will just be somebody reading it. But so I'll just read this and then okay. I'll, I'll start the clock as well. And let me just make some room. Here. All right. So this is it. Oh, God, this is it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So so you're. I'm just going to this is actually what I normally do with students. I, I just start them cold without any advice and then okay. and then just uh, give them feedback. So you have 15 seconds to prepare, 45 seconds to speak uh, during the 15 seconds to prepare. You're allowed to take notes uh, and you can uh, do that. And then when it's time to speak, you can just start speaking. So I'm going to read the question and the timer will start after I finish reading. So the question is, uh, let me just, okay. So some people prefer that their children have cell phones. Other parents think it's a bad idea for their children to have a cellular, cellular phone. Which do you prefer? Give reasons and examples to support your opinion. You have 15 seconds to prepare your response. You can begin preparing now. Okay. Just gonna think. Okay. We've got four seconds. All right. All right. And now you have 45 seconds to speak. You can begin speaking now. Okay. So the question of whether children should be given um, cell phones is obviously a very big one. And uh, it's one that people think about a lot. Um, as a parent myself, it's something that I will have to deal with in a few years when my daughter is old enough to have a cell phone. So the problems, the potential problems with children having cell phones could be that um, we don't know what they are using the cell phones for. And with access to the internet, they might be looking at things that they shouldn't be looking at. I'm not going to specify exactly what that would be um but uh you know it's hard to monitor the, the their usage uh, whereas ultimately i think it's important to uh be able to contact your children and for them to be able to contact you which is why i would think that it's a good idea at the end of the day and the beginning of the day and the middle of the all day all right all right so oh, 45 just, seconds I'm just, I'm just gonna go through this like i would assume so how do you feel yeah. about your response what, i what feel you that oh, i spent too much time at the beginning on my introduction and i didn't spend enough time actually getting into the uh the, the the proper question so i didn't really get didn't answer the question fully and i have a habit of rambling on and i did that too much at the beginning and the time went too fast that's what happened <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I wrote down a couple notes. Uh, the first thing is, is that, you know, you you actually started. So one kind of problem that sometimes comes up with students is that they they actually sound too formal, um, mm. you know, that they they actually sound too rigid and too much like uh, like a, you, kind of robotic mm. um, because they, they know that they have to do certain things, you know, that they have to give two reasons for their opinion or one reason that they have to address the question and, and all this kind of stuff. And so since they know that they have to do these things, it kind of gets in the way of sounding natural. So mm -hmm. one of the biggest pieces of advice that happens with this type of question is to just be natural, be natural, be natural. Um, and you did that in the, in the beginning, you said, okay, so uh, the, the, this is kind of like a vocal filler that I actually encourage students to do. This sometimes could be a problem if students say uh or um a lot. Yeah, uh, that would that will have a negative impact on your score. If you say that excessively, uh, it's it it hurts your uh, flow, your smoothness. And so we recommend that students have less than five of those. They're very natural. I do them. You do them. We all do them. Mm -hmm. But on the TOEFL, they're grading a very small portion of your spoken language. And so you don't want to fill that too much with us and ums, basically. Yeah. Fillers uh, are fillers are natural and normal. Um, right. Even things like that, even some things that people find annoying, like saying like and things like that. Uh, but yeah, um, I guess you shouldn't fill your 45 seconds with just, um, well, like so. And uh, well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's 
it's fine just as long as it's not too much. And then I, uh, and also you did the, the, the filler that I do all the time, which is okay. So uh, <laughs> I do that constantly. And, and sometimes somebody will point it out and then I'll watch something that I did before. And it's, it's uh, upsetting. Mm. Uh, and so, uh, so that's, and I'm doing, so once we start talking about vocal fillers, I'll start noticing all of them. So let me, let me move on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, 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 like you said, kind of rambled about the question for the first 20 seconds or so. You didn't get to your reasons until about second 22 or 23. And so you want to try to hit that uh, first reason around the 35, 30 second mark. And so you want to just have a brief introduction when you what you did was you repeated the question. There's actually some uh, kind of disagreement about should you repeat the question or not, because part of your grade is lexical complex complexity, mm. which is, you know, are you using, you know, a lot of different types of words and stuff. And so it, some people say you shouldn't repeat the question because you're not showing lexical complexity, complexity. Other people say it's an easy way to start. I, I don't really have much of an opinion either way. I think either one's okay. Yeah. Uh, I know I know people that have done both that score well. And starting is the hardest part. So if you have some type of uh, phrase or something that will help you start your response, then that's great. You know, if it's rereading the question, some people, you know, they want to rephrase the question. They know they're supposed to do that. But then they mm. start trying to rephrase it in their head and it all comes out kind of weird. Uh, so usually I have stu students remember some type of stock phrase, like uh, in my opinion, or first of all, uh, generally speaking, something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I try not to make uh, it a phrase. Uh, another thing that I, I try to give them is phrases because phrases are harder to connect, like first of all, or in addition to, instead of like first, second, that kind of thing. Oh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's easier to connect those phrases than it is Sorry, easier or harder to connect? Those, those, phrase. phrase, those phrases are a little bit more complicated. Yeah. And so that you're actually, so you're graded uh, with, a, with a computer and a human. And part of the, the grade is lexical complexity. And that could be vocabulary. That doesn't mean that you start saying really difficult vocabulary. It mm -hmm. just means that you can use uh, vocabulary naturally and comfortably. And part of that is, uh, I don't remember the word for it exactly, but kind of, phrasal not phrasal verbs but words that are connected those are yeah. harder to, those are harder to say naturally uh like you know in my opinion instead of opinion yeah like lexical that. groups or lexical chunks right something yeah. like that first yeah. of all instead of just right. firstly yeah right right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh and so so that's something we recommend uh but that so and then you got to your reasons and then there was something that you did uh which I, I mentioned not to do before <laughs> was, uh, oh, really? uh, was to to pick one side and stick to it. So you, you kind of started by saying it's it's kind of a negative thing. And then at the end, you're like, oh, but I need to contact my daughter. So in the end, it's, it's a good thing. Uh, you can do that. It's totally fine. You know that you can say both sides of the argument. Uh, yeah. And cons. yeah, yeah. Uh, it, but sometimes it, it's, it hurts your uh, structure and it's harder to, uh, like you did, you ran out of time. So you wouldn't yeah. have enough time to say both sides. Actually, uh, thinking, so thinking about it now, sorry, it, I think it would have been a lot easier for me to just be like, right, I hate smartphones and I think my <laughs> children should not have them because they're the, the end of the, it will be the end of the world. That would have been right, a much right. easier thing to, to do, actually, thinking about it now. But naturally, right. I wanted to be balanced about it and sort of look right. at two sides. But so it is it's you don't need to do that. You can just kind of come down on one side pretty much as long as you construct your you point. Yeah, you can. But yeah. but you know what? You, I mean, you did the most important thing was that you sounded natural and comfortable. And that's the hardest thing for people to do. So, uh, you know, at the end, everything that I tell students is advice um, to help them. But really, whatever you should take my advice and use it in a way that makes you comfortable and natural. Yeah. Um, and because that's the I in my experience, that's the hardest thing for students to overcome is for them to feel like they are comfortable taking this test and speaking for 45, 60 seconds. It's just unnatural. It's uncomfortable. It's hard. There's a lot of things to think about. And you don't know what the question is until test day. So it's very nerve wracking. Um, yeah, so, so I, it's a big thing. I, I felt that um, sort of structurally, I, I didn't do well because I as you said, spent too much time kind of outlining the question and then 
but... kind of giving one side. And then I, there was another point I wanted to make, which was that ultimately, you know, we want to be in touch with our kids and, and right. stuff. And so I, and I had to rush that out within about five or six seconds, that last point. So right, right, the, right. in terms of the structure and organization, it wasn't great. Now in, in IELTS, you do get marked on your organization and, and structure and stuff sure. like that. Was would that be a big deal in 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 this speaking test here that I that I did? That? Um, yeah, I mean it's part of your grade structure and organization, definitely. Uh, but you know, you did answer the question and you did have some organization. Uh, so I wouldn't say that they are. It would be there. You'd get more off if you went off topic or if you uh, you know weren't able to explain your reason very well at all mm -hmm. if you didn't have time to explain your reason. So they're not such stickul st sticklers, uh, so very strict for um, actual organization in my experience. Yeah. Uh, and, and in my experience, most of the time, the students, because when we work with students, most of our students, they have taken the test a lot. They know a lot about the test and they just can't get their score you know, for whatever reason, it's the only reason they would, you know, come to us really is that they just have this problem that they just can't, you know, uh, yeah. kind of crack. And it's almost always that they, they know, almost know too much, uh, that they know too much about the organization. They know too much about the structure and just forgot about communicating. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that, and that is usually the adv biggest advice we give it and the and we work with students to try to help them do that uh in different ways you know giving them some words and phrases giving them some certain exercises to do you know sometimes there's pronunciation issues sometimes there is structure issues uh but i would say 80 percent of the time it's it's just being natural yeah just yeah. yeah remember that everyone just remember that you are a human okay <laughs> always good to remember that uh, yeah, that's good. yeah so yeah organization not not maybe getting to all the points you noted uh mm -hmm. fine but yeah fluency ease and um and naturalness and communicating your points and answering the question i suppose these this what this is what sounds like uh now, and in the ielts do if from from what i'm explaining to you for for tofu do you think the ielts is easier or more difficult it sounds relatively the same, but I would it's say it's same. easier because you have more time. You have more time. Okay. I actually to think to think about your answers or you have, a, you have more time to think and also uh -huh. more time to speak. And people okay. might kind of say, Oh, more time. That's more frightening, but no, no, more time is good because it allows you to just relax a little bit more that I felt so much pressure there in that 45 second uh, okay. time limit. Um, <laughs> it was really hard to, to do it and and maybe some people might feel that you know it takes them 45 seconds to kind of warm up um sure yeah yeah it okay. seems pretty yeah. harsh to use just 45 seconds of speaking and use that as the sample it seems pretty right. harsh um so i would say just in terms of the time limit um ielts have you you have longer in ielts and that feels a bit a bit less um uh, uh pressured um in my in my in my feeling yeah anyway. and are you supposed to sound like uh is it, are you supposed to give a type of organized response or do they care that much is it just as long as you answer the question and and sound natural it's the same same kind of thing as in TOEFL really there there are um you know organization and structure is a is is a criteria i believe uh but task achievement is is maybe the main one you know mm -hmm. basically did you answer the question that was given to you Right. Um, that's the main thing where you wait, first of all, were you able to answer the question? Cause mm -hmm. some people, I mean, I, I did a test in French, uh, a while ago, um, okay. to, How'd it go? Uh, um, I, I, all right. I got what I needed to get. So I got, good, a B, I got the required B one level, which yeah, would yeah, allow yeah. me to apply for citizenship here. Nice. Congrats. But, um, I, th I think there were three sections. I mean, it was it, it was an absolute nightmare. I mean, I it, it was in <laughs> July and it was boiling hot, and I decided to walk to the test center. So by the time oh. I arrived, I was absolutely drenched in sweat, and I chose yeah, to yeah. wear a nice shirt, and it was all sticking to me. It was horrible. I was, okay. I was like, oh god, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like uh, Hunter S. Thompson, you know, in Fear and Loathing sure, in yeah, Las yeah. Vegas, you know, yeah. like oh god, just like sweating while trying to answer these questions. Most of it was okay, but there was one point where the, the 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 examiner asked me a question, which was, what was it now? She said, "Why is it why is it harder to change something as you get older?" 
And I thought oh, she okay. refer, was referring to, you know, why is it hard to, you know, change your habits when you get older? But there was a word in there that I didn't understand and I just kind of ignored uh, it. But I finished saying my terrible like response which is like well as we get older it's more difficult to change because we are older and you know it's something terrible right, like right, that right, 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 and then right. she was like okay 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 and then at the end of my one minute or something she was like but what about what about eating habits and i was like sorry what uh, like, what about see, you know okay. uh, alimentation and i was like yeah, uh yeah. and then i realized i've got no idea what alimentation means uh, i see okay and so i actually had to say to her oh uh, je suis désolé uh, uh, <laughs> i don't know what alimentation means and she was like oh okay yeah. well anyway you've run out of time and, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, like that. and then at the end i i said to, as she was finishing the she was like you know turning off the tape player and stuff i said to mm. her i said to her oh part three was difficult i said in french and she said to me, oh, that's okay. We have a lift. And I was like, thank God that wasn't in the test. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think what she understood was me saying, oh, I'm really hot and sweaty. And no, I have to take the stairs. I don't know what she thought I meant. But um, okay. I, yeah, I, want, just, I want to go on the roof and have a cigarette. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's okay. Yeah. We have a lift. And I was like, I just turned around and just left. You know, I thought, yeah. right, I'm not going to show off any more of my bad French in front of this woman. Right, right. But luckily, I got the result I wanted. So everything was OK in the end. Good. Good. Mm. And yet, you know, and when you're working with somebody and, and you mess up, you know, they kind of make you feel usually they, you know, they make you feel not so bad about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then when you're taking a test and talking to a computer, you only have yourself. And, and like then it could, you know, you, it's, it's not as reassuring as seeing another person helping you out. Yeah, and you don't get the benefit of that human interaction, you know, that, right. that you know, someone just nodding along and listening right, to right. you can really put you at ease. Yeah, so practice, practice, practice must be the, sure. the thing, like, you know, practicing responding to these questions uh, to a computer and, and so on. Do you have any other tips? Do you have any specific tips for, for, for how people can prepare them? Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, the big thing is record your voice. Um, you know, that, that's, that, that's always the hardest thing too, because you know, your voice is not how you think it sounds. Uh, it's very upsetting when you, when you hear your voice for your first mm -hmm. time. Uh, but, um, nobody likes to sound their own voice. Everybody's in the same boat. Uh, and you know, there, there's, uh, you know, now, you know, we're working on this as well, that there's a lot of technology out there that speech, uh, speech to text recognition, you know, that you speak and it writes down what you say. Uh, if you're having trouble with certain words or certain sounds or certain, you know, whatever, then I would recommend going through some, having some stock sentences or having some sample responses. We have sample responses on our site and students can uh, repeat the responses and see if the speech to text actually recognizes the response that they're saying. Mm. Um, for example, you know, so th those are just some of the things that we recommend. Uh, if you're, it depends on the student, the trouble that they're having. If they're having trouble with like, uh, and, um, like we talked about before, uh, record yourself, count how many us and ums you have, and then go back and, and try to do the same response, but with fewer, uh, doing the same response more than once is a big one comes up pretty often, uh, because most people, and this is just for test practice in general, just any practice in general is that most people want to move on to the next thing. But if you can really try to restrain yourself a bit and, and do the same thing more than once and review what you did, that's the biggest thing is the, the biggest challenge is asking students to review their work yeah. um, and, and look at it again. But it's really, really useful. Yeah, I find the same that, thing. That's, yeah, yeah that's, the, that's, the, that's the biggest tip, really. Yeah, but th then, and then the other tips kind of depends on the student. Uh, one thing we work on with students now is that... Um, just to give you an example from my own life, like I don't like to exercise, uh, but I'm older, so I have to do it. And, uh, and there's a, there's an app that tells me what to do every day. Um, and then at the end it claps and says, I'm, I'm, I'm wonderful. And so, you know, that, that really helps uh, my motivation. And, and so, uh, and it helps me do it because I don't have to think, I think that's one big thing with test prep is, is just kind of sitting down and thinking like what I have to do. Um, so, you know, we, we, started making syllabus syllabi for students and uh helping students you know okay you do this every day and, and try to practice this every day to help take the guesswork out um and just kind of schedule it beforehand and if you're studying on your own i would recommend that as well trying to get everything set up beforehand so you know what to do every day mm. uh will help because you just you just make excuses because uh, you know you just don't want to do it i mean i don't want to exercise so you just you know uh, 
it's got to be the number one problem or the number one fault that people just don't do the work and they don't do it regularly. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, a planned program where you just look at the program and it says, right, today you're going to do this, this, and this. Right. And you don't really need to think about it. It takes the decision-making equation out. Right. Uh, it takes exactly. the decision-making you know, problem out of the equation. Um, right. And uh, yeah, so if, yes, a system uh, that you can follow. Yes. Um, should, should we talk about the Duolingo test then? Yeah, now? yeah. If, if you have some, a couple minutes, yeah. So uh, we are working on it now. We don't offer anything for Duolingo yet, but we will in the next couple of months. Uh, but I'm really excited about it. Um, I think it's a better test for students, and I think that uh, if you had to choose between TOEFL IBT and Duolingo, it's it's kind of no brainer that you you would take the Duolingo English test. Why is that? Uh, be, um, uh, well, I mean, it's a lot easier <laughs> uh, uh, for one thing, you know, it's a lot easier, it's cheaper, a lot cheaper. Uh, and so, okay, so this is what happened. Let me, let me give a little bit of background Duolingo English test. So okay. forever it's been TOEFL and IELTS and, and the, those have been the two English tests for, um, to kind of prove yourself for business, for school, for international travel. It's basically been TOEFL and IELTS. Duolingo English tests la launched from the same company that does Duolingo, the, the app. Uh, they launched it a while ago now, about five or six years ago, but it never really took off. Um, and because there's TOEFL and, I and IELTS, and so it, it and most places, uh, institutions didn't feel like the Duolingo English test was a reliable metric. Yeah, I mean, it's it, like it, it's 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 made by a little cartoon owl. I mean, how reliable yeah. is that? Like, <laughs> it, you're the one who's testing my English, this little green owl? Yeah, that, that <laughs> annoying owl. That, that will, my English. That, yeah, that, that'll send you notifications. Yeah, so they, <laughs> uh, so, so, you know, it, like, you know, these uh, institutions, you know, they're like, uh, no, no, thank you. We'll just take the TOEFL and IELTS. It's fine. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we don't really trust the results. There, there wasn't really a lot of um, research. Uh, TOEFL and IELTS, they, they have quite a bit of literature and history about yeah. the reliability. Um, so they had trouble getting off the ground. They had a couple like Ivy League schools that it was that didn't really matter what they took because they had other metrics. Yeah. Um, but so, but COVID happened um, a year ago. Got a lot harder to book your um, TOEFL and IELTS test in the testing center. Uh, it took a while for TOEFL to do a computerized test online. They do it now, but it took them a while. Uh, I guess IELTS is the same that they do they do it i don't know do they do a yeah. computer test yeah. yeah there is a computer version yeah okay yeah um and there are these people that still wanted to study in the states uh, study in canada and and um that's what that's where toefl usually comes in like ielts is is more international whereas toefl seems to be inter it's international but it's mostly uh north american universities uh, and so these north american universities didn't have students uh, these students needed to get uh, scores, so English test scores, and they couldn't get them. So Duolingo stepped in. So in the last, I don't know, six, nine months, something like that, the number of universities that take Duolingo has grown from like 300 to 3000 or some some crazy number as yeah. well by thousands. Um, yeah. And so, uh, you know, I don't... It, uh, I wonder if I can get the page really quickly, but the, if you go to, and I'll, uh, I'll share the link in the description as mm -hmm. uh, I'll share it with you, Luke, after, but okay. um, there's a, there's a, a link here for the institution. You could check uh, what institution, but this is just 10 out of 1,650 pages. So, you know, whatever that Whoa. is multiplied by 10. Uh, so 10, over 10,000 schools um, now uh, take this, take this test internationally. Um, and so, it, and this is just a huge increase in the last year for, for them. And so it's, it's, it's now taken worldwide. And so the, the stuff with, is it reliable? Does it have all the research metrics and evidence? You know, they're, they're getting it now. They're, they're, they're trying to get it after the fact. Um, and they do they do have like if you go there, there is literature that, you know, there is yeah. there is some some, you know, backing for it. Um, I, I'll uh, I'll, sh I'll run through the test so you can see what it's like and see how it is compared to the the other tests. But uh, basically it's 
Um, it's easier because it's a lot shorter. It takes less than an hour. It's 50 bucks. And there isn't long writing or speaking things that you have to do. Uh, the longest writing assignment is at least 50 words. Uh, the well, that's it, just 50 words. Yeah, there, there's an essay that you have to write at the end that's considered not graded. There's there's a speaking and writing, uh, speaking interview and writing thing, writing essay kind of at the end that's considered not graded. Not um, great, not graded. Sorry. It, it, so yeah, so there's these two final questions in speaking and writing are considered not graded. They're going to be sent to the school that you apply for. So they send the speaking and writing okay. samples to the school that you apply for, but it's not part of your final grade. Um, so let me just <laughs> kind of like, so if you want to see their writing, look at that. <laughs> We're not grading it. You read it. It's a bit like that. Isn't yeah. It? Anyway, yeah. Sorry. So it's, it's, it's a different approach. You know, it's, it's, it's definitely a different, um, way of going about this. Uh, so they, they have a couple of different question types that I will run through. Um, now they're just taking over my camera. That's why my camera might be a little weird right now, but this is, there, is a C test. Sorry. Is there any way you could expand the, your screen so that that's much yeah. bigger? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, this is a C test. Um, uh, C, C test. Uh, yeah. It's called a C test where, where you get a certain portion of the word and then you have to, you know, I'll just, yeah. just fill this in. Um, yeah. so, and you get probably about, um, about five of these in the test. So you get a bunch of these and they're, and then you have to repeat what you heard here. Okay. Yeah. This one I have to type. And this is an adaptive test. So this is actually going to change as I take the test. Okay. So the, the questions will get easier or more difficult depending on whether or not uh, I get the word, these, these first questions correct. Select the real English words in the list. So we've got a, a list of words that are, some of them are real words, some of them are not. And you're, right. So, yeah. so, so you select, oh yes. Yeah, so there's for the audio listeners, um, the, so you have a, a bunch of words and you have to select multiple words that are correct. Mm -hmm. And there's some that are incorrect. I'm pretty sure greasy is spelled wrong. Uh, and then no, you do, yeah. you do yeah, sorry, the I was going to say that the, the, the previous one was like a paragraph and some of the words have been removed or some letters from the words have been removed and you just have to kind of fill them in. And I don't right. think it was specifically about any kind of verb forms or anything. It was, it was almost like every seventh word or, or something like that. I, I, yeah, that, that's like... that's the other thing with the C test is that it doesn't really follow any type of logic in terms of like it's only nouns or it's only longer yeah. words. Like you, mm -hmm. you, there's like function words that are crossed out, like I, like it. You know that that there's only an I and you have to put the T. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a bit like some of the parts of a Cambridge exam, like the use of English in in FCE. Um, has similar things where you've got missing words and they're usually little words like functional words, as you said, like auxiliary verbs, pronouns, um, prepositions, things like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they have, um, they have those as well. And it doesn't seem to be, there's, from my experience and from talking to other people, it, there doesn't seem to be much criteria to what words are blanked out. Um, it, yeah. It's just kind of like, can you understand, still is it still enough information for you to answer the question i much. think you know there there that is an, a recognized approach to test making or or exercise creation is that there is there is a, a method where you just literally take a text and every ninth word whatever it is you blank it out and then the oh, students really? have to just fill in those ninth words and that that is a kind of um a way of sort of blanket across the board linguistically. It's not focusing on verbs or prepositions or conjugation or whatever. It's just, you know, every ninth word. And that, that actually does um, test your knowledge of sentence structure and lexis and, and things quite, quite well, actually. There's, mm -hmm. there's an argument for it anyway. Yeah. And there's, there's arguments for these questions too. I mean, and so, you know, I, like for me saying it's easier is subjective. I mean, I, I just, from my experience teaching TOEFL, I mean, for example, you don't have to learn about a negative factual information question, you know, <laughs> like, like, you know, and, or, you know, any of this other stuff. So, you know, the, the validity of the test, I can't really speak to, um, you know, that, that would be something yeah. that you would talk to the Duolingo English test researchers about and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I like it. 
I but I don't I don't know that, and so I I like it for the students as well, uh, mm. because uh, it's it's very student centered, and and that's something that Duolingo is really good at, and what their mission has always been really ha has been to, I mean they're a juggernaut of a company, but they yeah. they're the the original purpose at least was to give access of information and education to people, and so you know the the this kind of you know this decreases price barrier. Um, and it's uh, more user friendly and people could take it from anywhere. And people couldn't do that for TOEFL or IELTS until uh, COVID. Uh, mm. And so that, that was the other thing about it. It would be very um, interesting to, to, to sort of find out some, find some study to see how reliable all, of the, all the tests are in relation to each other. You know, if we can compare results in some sure. controlled test, I'd love to find out. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm sort of making fun of Duolingo a little bit, you know, saying that they, <laughs> it's, it's, it's run by a green owl. And right, right, he right. He doesn't have the right to grade my English. He's an owl, for goodness sake. But um, right. yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah I, I, I don't know actually that much about the basis, the, the sort of um, methodology that goes into making the test. So yeah, it yeah, could easily th be there's, decent. There's a there's a bunch of literature on it, um, and you know there's uh, they they have information on their website, and and that's another thing too about this test is that it's pretty easy to understand. Um, that was the thing that kind of how I I got popular on YouTube with TOEFL is just because the TOEFL is just so hard to wrap your head around. Yeah, you know the IELTS is so hard to wrap your head around. Um, that that's kind of you know, how I, I, people wanted to know this information because the, it's hard to wrap your head around. This is not very hard to wrap your head around. Um, and it, the, when you need to improve, you have to practice. And so we, what we're working on is practice and some advice and, and that kind of thing. Uh, and yeah, so people just kind of really need to, to practice with the test. And I, in my opinion, if you know, uh, you know, it does show if you know something or not. Yeah. Uh, you know, is it, best for uh, schools, you know, for universities trying to get students to come, I think it's a good fit. Do I think it would be a good fit for medical professionals? Uh, that I'm not as certain about, um, you know, so I think it's a great fit for schools. But like, so for example, there's a test called OET, which is for like nurses and dentists and things like that. And that's a really hard English test um, because they need to know a lot of hard English for their job. Yeah. Um, Whereas, you know, in a school, you do have to know difficult English and uh, that is a part of it. But, you know, there's a lot of things that you can learn on campus as well. Uh, one thing I'll just note also just because just because it's in front of me and I don't want to forget is that uh, you don't get scores speaking, reading, <laughs> listening, writing. Uh, what? Sorry? You, get, you, you don't get a score for speaking, score for reading, score for listening. You get scores on literacy, comprehension, conversation and production. Okay. Uh, and, and also, uh, I can give a couple links for people so they can read more about it, but the, the big problem for students usually for this is production, um, because production is speaking and writing, basically yeah. it's, it's what you produce. Um, and so th they do grade it a bit differently here as well. And, and it's graded out of 160, I think is the highest score. Right. Yeah. So I it's very different. I think the thing that, that, that you said there about uh, preparing people for university, though, I mean, surely the advantage that TOEFL has there is that at least students are writing essays. I mean, there, there might be yeah. short ones, but they are they it, it does at least test their ability to do academic writing and yeah. listen to lectures and probably yeah. read certain bits of important academic re you know text, um, yeah. even announcements. You know, that's pretty important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're, yeah, uh, yeah speaking, I mean, yeah. I, and I, I think it does a really good job. I've always thought TOEFL does a good job of measuring people's English. And and like it's to me, it's a hard test to cheat. Like you, you either know what's there or not. Um, yeah. In my experience working at schools um, in the States, at least uh, they want international students. And uh, and so we had a lot of programs for English. I mean, that was my job, you know, teaching English. So we, we had a lot of students for English. So, you know, and they had TOEFL scores, you know, so, you know, just because they have a TOEFL score doesn't necessarily mean they can write an essay. You know, they, they might be able to do it for TOEFL, but it doesn't mean they're ready for a freshman mm -hmm. levels class. 
Um, but you're right in terms of the TOEFL being better suited for what they have to do in in school. It definitely is better suited for what they have to do in school. Uh, it definitely that's what the test was designed to do. This, well, I don't know what it was designed for exactly. Don't know if it was for school, uh, but it it's it's uh, it's something that's being used for schools now. Yeah, it is huge. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Well. Josh, um, really interesting. Thank you for telling us sure. about the tests and stuff. And well, what, you know, this is what people usually say at the ends of these conversations and interviews. Where where should people go if they want to sure. find out more? Tell us about your, um, you know, your online work so that people can get involved if they want to prepare for TOEFL or Duolingo or whatever it is they're doing. Sure. So tstprep.com is the uh, the site that I run, and and I'm on uh, I'm on the tube on the YouTube is uh, just search TOEFL TST Prep. You'll find us. Uh, and in the near future, we'll do more. Do, everything's going to be TOEFL. Um, we're going to do more general English and Duolingo in the near future. Um, and yeah, so check us, check me out, check us out there. And uh, also, you know, I want to say, Luke, thank you for having me, man. This is really like a real treat. Like I. I uh, I, I've I've been familiar with your work for a while, and uh, I really respect what you do. And thank you, thank you so much for having me. That's right. You're welcome. Yeah. Nice to <laughs> nice to talk to you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, and thank you. Um, you know, I guess it's dinner time now, right? Over there in, in Japan. <laughs> Is it? Uh, yeah, it's it's yeah in Japan. It's it's bedtime pretty much. Well, not bedtime, but for the kids, yeah, nine, yeah. nine fifteen. Yeah. So okay. Uh, but yeah, so. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Nice to talk to you. Good luck for the future and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, keep in touch. All right. All right. Sounds good. All right. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.